What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you more about the Interaction SDK, where we're gonna be creating hand poses in real time by using a hand pose recorder that the Oculus integration provides. This is really cool because if you wanted to create a hand pose that looks very realistic, let's say that we wanted to grab a cup or we wanted to grab a different object, we can basically position our fingers correctly and actually change those in real time so that when we actually grab them by creating experiences, they're gonna look as realistic as possible. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. The first one that I'm gonna be adding is going to be a cup and I'm gonna drag it and drop it into the interactable scene and it's gonna basically put it right in there in the middle. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do because we're gonna be basically recording some of these poses is we're gonna be adding a couple of components. The first one that we're gonna be grabbing, adding is gonna be grab the grabbable. So let me go ahead and make sure I add that. And we don't need to do anything in here. You can also watch the previous video where I go more into details about that component. And then the next one is gonna be a rigid body. This component in here, I want it to interact with physics, so we're just gonna let it use gravity and it's not gonna be set to kinematic. And then the last component that we're also gonna need for this to work, this is gonna be a physical grabbable component, so make sure that I add that. And as soon as you do that, it's going to add everything that it needs automatically. So you're gonna need a grabbable, rigid body, and physics grabbable. You can also add a new component, but it's gonna be added Basically, if you add the, the one grab free transformer, it's gonna allow us to interact with this object, but the component that we're gonna be using, which is gonna be this scene, is going to add that for us, and I'm gonna show you how that works. There's gonna be a left button and also a right red button. And there's also gonna be whether you want to set grabbing on, and that means that we're gonna allow to grab objects as we're recording them. If you set it to off, it basically won't let you do that. Also, how many seconds we're going to be using for the recorder to get started. And I would set it to three, I think that's good. And then we have our basically undo and redo functionality. So I'm gonna use the right button, just go ahead and press it. You're gonna see the timer. I'm gonna position my hands on the cup. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that now we have basically what's called a ghost of the hand. And I can actually grab it as well, which is really, really cool. The other thing that I can also do is using physics, right? Because this is falling in here. And I like to do that for basically recording features. It's, it just makes it easier. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another framing here. I'm gonna adjust it right around there. And we can grab it just to make sure that I like how that works. Let's go ahead and do one more. This one's gonna be right in here. Like, you know, normally how we would grab a cup and you can see that that kind of works. There's really, you know, the fingers are not completely aligning perfectly, but this is a great start. If I go in here to the scene view, you're gonna see that now we have basically our cup in here. There's three different objects if I expand this is gonna be, there's gonna be a hand grab interactable, one for each one of the components. There's also these handles in here, which we can adjust in runtime. And I could go in here if I wanted to and say, okay, you know what? I don't like that this is basically going through the cup and I can just change it if I wanted to, but I don't wanna do it in here. I found an easier way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I have a folder called prepare under prefabs hand grab objects. And basically all the original objects are here and then anything that I'm preparing, it's going to go in here. In fact, it looks like I already had one for a doll, which I'm gonna remove in just a minute. But I'm gonna drag and drop my prefab in here. And then I'm gonna go into play and then just go ahead and play again to stop the scene. So this one we can get rid of. We're gonna have to redo that one, but that's okay. But this one right here though, like if I go into it, you're gonna see that this has everything that, you know, that I just recorded. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go back and this is gonna be my original one. We can just go ahead and basically hide that one. And then we can grab the one that we just prepared. And I'm gonna just go ahead and put it in here. And the reason why I wanted to have the cup, basically the handle facing me is because it's gonna make it easier when you want to mirror some of these hand poses. So all of this is done for a reason. So just trust me, as soon as we get done, you're gonna see, oh yeah, that, that's why that works so well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically just reset some of these just to make sure we have everything set. I think I set it to something like that. And then the Z was going to be set to point to. And I don't wanna have any rotation on any of these objects, specifically the parent object. The only thing that has rotation is gonna be the visual here, which I basically rotated negative 90 so that we could, you know, if you mirror something as you grab the handle, say that you mirror the hand to the other side, it's basically gonna mirror specifically exactly how I want it when I grab it with the left hand. So this is great, right? 
So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click in here and then unpack this completely. And there's gonna be a couple objects in here that I'm gonna get rid of and it's gonna make it a lot cleaner. And then now if I go in here, you're gonna see that I still have my goals, but I don't have those objects in there that are duplicated. Then once you do that, now we're gonna start going into here and say, okay, you know what? I don't want, I don't, I don't like how this looks. Maybe I can just change this and we can do something like that. You can also move the whole hand if you wanted to. That on this one. So pretty happy with this one. Looks really cool actually. And we can go back to the other one. That one looks, it looks okay. I'm still like not too happy. We can just do, okay, there we go. I think that, I think that looks better. And then lastly, this is the one where I was grabbing. So this one we can go in and in fact, I can grab the whole hand and make sure that I grab the right handle. And we can do something like this so that we can also move this finger here. One cool thing with this, if you notice on this finger, we also have the thumb is locked, which means that we cannot do anything with it when we're grabbing the cup. The index finger is going to be locked, meaning that we cannot let go of the finger. The middle and, and ring are actually constrained, but that doesn't mean that they're locked. I can also move it, it's basically gonna snap, and as soon as I move them, they're gonna move as well. And then also the max is not gonna be constrained, it's just gonna be, you know, I'm just gonna be moving the pinky finger. I don't know why they call it max, but basically that is the, the, the pinky finger. And then this is something that I requested and I'm really happy that they added. And this allows you to basically just modify if you wanna be more accurate on the movements. Maybe this one, we wanted to move it a little bit in. I can grab the C-axis and we can go in here and add it. Maybe you wanna move it on the Y-axis. You can also do that. If I wanted to move the pinky finger, if I had it not to be free, we could also change that. So if I wanted to say, let's say that this one is constrained, right? And I wanted to move this. You're gonna see how that value of Z on the hand pinky three, it's moving. And that's because I am constraining it, but I'm gonna set it, we're gonna set it as free. We can also set the middle finger, we can just have it lock, because I want it to lock in there. And in fact, we can just make it a little bit cleaner if we do something like that. All right, let me go ahead and check this out, see if I can grab it from the top. And you can see that this is our pose and it looks great. Let me see if I can grab it from the side, because that was the other one that I added. I can gonna go ahead and drink a little bit of coffee, that actually looks good. What if I wanted to grab it from the handle, right? Now the two fingers are adjusting. I can let go of my pinky finger and also my ring finger, but the other fingers are currently locked and that's because of the rules that we set. The other thing that I can also do is I can try with my left hand, but I can't really grab it with the left hand. And honestly, you can go in there if you wanted to and, and do and record it for the left hand, but I don't think that's a good idea if you have a mirror functionality. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. If we go in here, and you look at each one of these independently, and we go down, you're gonna see that they have an option here to create a mirror hand grab interactable, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and mirror this one, and you're gonna see as soon as I click it, it's basically gonna mirror perfectly, and if you wanna change some of those positions, you can on the mirror, and I just wanted to show you, you didn't have to create those from scratch. You can basically just mirror all of them, and now we, you know, we have everything mirror, and it's also, assign correctly to the left hand. And let me see if I can grab it with the left hand. You guys can see that now this is perfectly perfectly mirror. I can also do that with the right hand. Let me see if I can grab it from the handle. So before we keep going, we need to make sure that we save our changes in here. So let me go ahead and remove this object that was prepared. And let's grab the one that we have as clean. And you're gonna see that it has everything that we need now. And we can go ahead and remove the original one if you wanted to, or you can leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And then you're gonna have the original one here and also the one that was prepared in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically hide this object and then we're gonna be focusing on the on the new object. So on this one, I wanted to do basically the, the actual Oculus controller. And the cool thing with this is we're gonna be basically grabbing the controller and making the pose as realistic as we can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the other one. We're gonna go ahead and add basically a grabbables component and this thing is like right on my head. It's really uncomfortable, but anyways. And then I'm also going to be adding the rigid body. We can do that. And also adding the physics grabable. And we can do that. I think that's all the objects that I'm gonna need just for now on this. All right, so we got the object in here. I actually set it to kinematic, so it didn't move. So what we can do in here, let's say that I wanted to do it every two seconds. 
I can change that. If I wanted to change it to be, you know, maybe five seconds, and I don't want to basically set it to grab on, I can just go ahead and toggle that if I wanted to, to on, on, off. So we can go ahead and set it back to on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and then maybe position my hand in a way that it looks as real as we can. And you can see that I can now, you know, do the same thing. I'm gonna set that grabbing to off because if I were to grab it, it's gonna try to snap it, and I, want, I don't want to snap it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to off. And I'm gonna change this to be, oh, we can just do something faster. We can do two seconds, and I'm gonna do grab it in here. And then we can do maybe one more where I just grab it like this. So now we have a couple of poses. Let's just do one more so that I can show you that this works. And now we have multiple poses in here, right? And there we go. So now that basically got rid of that hand pose. So I can do the undo, and I can also do the redo if I wanted to. You can see how that comes back. And I can also, Go ahead and undo it. Let me try that one more time. And, I, and now it went away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my prepare. I'm gonna drag it and drop it in here. And we can go ahead and hit play and basically go back to the beginning. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, we don't need this object. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. This one we can collapse it and I can drag and drop this component in here. And now we have our component that we're gonna be playing with. So this one, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, and this is how I made it work. You obviously can do it in a different, you know, different type of steps. But on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and remove each one of these ghost components, just like I did before. And now we should have, you know, the couple of poses that we had. And I think in this one, I'm gonna do, I think this one for the most part looks good. We can probably just move this finger here. We can move and separate this one right here so that we're not, and then also we can probably just bring it out so we're not colliding as much that it doesn't look real. And then maybe this one we can just bring down a little bit. And I think for the most part, everything looks great. We can bring this down. And on the pinky finger though, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to be, let's go ahead and do a constraint. So we have more control over this. And we can bring it down here. And I think it's touching, so, so this actually doesn't look too bad, it looks, it looks great. So now let's go ahead and look at the other pose. I'm gonna do the same thing that we did before. And in fact, this one doesn't have the pinky finger constraint, which is fine, we can leave that one like that. We can just bring this out a little bit so it doesn't look too fake. And then maybe bring this in. This one we can just, the, we can grab the index finger and then bring it all the way in. And we can do something like that, I think I think works. So, so it looks like we're grabbing the controller, and let's look at the last one as well. So this one though, I think I'm gonna be bringing in more so that it looks like we're grabbing the, the actual object. And I'm gonna bring these up a little bit more and then just do something like that. But you get the idea, right? We're moving the fingers and making sure that it looks like we're grabbing it so that we can make you know experiences that look more realistic. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the left controller that I have in here that I haven't prepared. I'm gonna drag it and drop it right above it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone these ones, right? So I'm gonna go to the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and clone it. I'm gonna do the second one, I'm gonna clone it as well. And when I say clone, it's actually doing a mirror. And then what we can do now is I can drag it and drop it into the left controller, which is what I wanna do, is I wanna use these ones for the left controller. And now if we were to hide the right one, you're gonna see that now we have this snapping correctly on the left controller, and it's in the right position. So. It is really important that you position everything correctly, otherwise these things are not going to mirror correctly. So, but this is not gonna work quite yet, and I'm gonna show you why. So, what I'm gonna do though on this one, I think everything looks okay on this one. We have the right hand associated, we have the right components, but on these components, this is still pointing to the right hand, so that's the only problem when you copy and you mirror them, and then drag them and drop them into other components, you're gonna need to reassociate some of these. We need to go ahead and associate the grabable component in here. And I can also do the rigid body, just like we did before. And then I also had a physics grabable that we have. Let's, let's go ahead and make sure that we have. We also have a one grab free transformer. And there's all these interactable trigger broadcasters that we don't really need, but the system add, added them automatically. The only time that you need these is if you're controlling the actual physics yourself when the simulation actually happens. But in our case, we're not, so we can go ahead and remove them. But we do need the, the one grab free transformer 
So let's go ahead and go here and I'm gonna grab and add that. And I think that's everything that I need in here. I set it to kinematic to star. I think I'm gonna set it to kinematic as well. And let's just make sure that I associate these. If you, again, if you wanna know more about the grabbable, just make sure that you look at the previous video. So now I can go in here and then make sure that I have everything associated correctly. And I also don't have the, there's one more component that I need that I, I'm gonna show you. I think this one is already associated. And then let's do this one as well. So I'm gonna go here and then drag and drop the controller, the rigid body, and then also my relative two is going to be that. And then lastly, I'm also going to be doing this one, assign it to left, and then this, and the reason I remember this is because I've done this way too many times. But anyways, the other component that you're also gonna need that is going to allow you to grab this in a, in a smooth manner, and I'm gonna show you why that is, is gonna be this move to, towards target provider. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this component. I think we can add it to all of them at once. I just need to associate them individually. So if we go in here, you're gonna see that this needs a, a movement provider and it's gonna be itself because I added it to the script. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So let's do on the left hand, I'm gonna make this travel speed to be very high. That way I can show you the differences between the left hand and also that right hand. So now what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and, let me go ahead and move this one, maybe right about here. And then the right one, we're gonna be putting right about here. Okay, so given that I didn't miss anything, let me make sure that I can grab this. So look that that works. Let me see if I can grab the other controller. Looks like I can grab it there. I can also grab it from, let me try this again. It looks, okay. The reason why it's so slow, look and see how it's slow, right? Like when I'm trying to grab it, it's trying to snap. It's because I set the, move the movement provider to be about one second so that's what it looks like it's it's like magic right it has a magnet hand and i think that works for some experiences but in my case i'm going to change it back so that i can show you how this really works but this works right i can grab it from here i can grab it from here and i believe i have one in here as well and then this one also works in here i'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the doll here and this is from one of the demos that the interaction SDK team put together who, you know, did an amazing job. And this one I offset it to, I think I did negative 180, and I think that's what they had. And, and normally I recommend that you do that on the on the actual mesh. That way we don't mess with the transforms on the parent object. And then I think that Y and Z are just fine. That's what I did on the other ones. Okay, so on this one though, I'm gonna be doing, doing the same thing that we did before. It's gonna need a grabbable. It's also going to be needing a rigid body. And we can set it to kinematic. We can change it back in just a minute. And this one, I won't forget to do it because I want this one to be more like a physical object. Okay, so that's all we need on this object. So last thing though, is I'm gonna go ahead and record and I'm gonna show you another component that we need to add that is gonna make this really, really powerful. All right, so right now we cannot grab it, right? Because we haven't really done that. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have grabbing on and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the red button. Let's go ahead and grab her. And now you can see that now I'm grabbing her. And we can add more poses if I wanted to grab it from the head or from different, you know, different places, we could do that. I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna show you why. So if we go back in here and we look at our pose, we're gonna follow the same structure that I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the doll here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. We're gonna go back into her. And you can see that now we have that pose. And in fact, if we wanted to change the, the values in here, you can. I'm also going to be removing this guy, just like we did before. And we can change this in here and you know make sure that it looks clean. Okay, so the last thing that you need to do is you're gonna go into hand grab interactable. And here we're gonna be adding another component, which is the cylinder grab surface. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see this cylinder that gets added. And this is gonna be the area that we can basically do that pose on. It's gonna have a starting point and you can see the starting point it's going to be right here on the top of her head. I'm gonna bring that down by using the handles. And I think I'm gonna do it right about her waist right there. And then I can do something like this. All right, let's see if we can grab her. And it looks like we can grab her. The other thing that I can do though, is I can grab it from you know any angle and it doesn't snap back to that main angle. And that's the cool thing about this though. I can go also a little bit down and a little bit forward. So I can actually just grab it from, from there. And that's because of the a starting point and the ending point. Okay, so let's see if we can grab the controller. We can grab the controller there. I can grab the other controller. Everything is working. We can grab it from the top. And we can all rotate it. 
I can also grab the coffee if I wanted to, and this one also is using physics, and I can grab it from here. And we can grab the doll as well. I think the doll is right on my keyboard. And I have more level of, you know, precise. And looks like the head, she doesn't fit in the cup, but we can try. Okay, yeah, she doesn't fit in the cup, so I don't think I'm gonna try that again. But basically, you know, everything is working how we want it to work. I can grab everything perfectly. And that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.